Well, welcome back to our next edition of the Mike Care Radio Show, Fantastic Florida, as we are here, as always, in beautiful Ocoee, Florida, USA, planet Earth. And my next guest is Mr. David Summerfleck, who is a great uh, digital marketing specialist with about 20 years of experience working for brands such as Microsoft, Audi, ALL Time Warner and hundreds of uh, business owners and he's here to talk about digital marketing and how to grow your b- business and uh, believe it or not David that this this show is actually part of a business and uh, you know I, I, there's a lot of people out there you know podcasters and people out there that are that are interested in this topic and I'm so glad we we could do it so first of all let's talk a little bit about digital marketing and we want to get a little digital marketing 101 so when you say digital marketing, I mean, does that mean the, the, the Internet? What exactly are you talking about? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your program. To me, digital marketing is the same thing, basically, as Internet marketing, online marketing. It's the same thing. However, it's basically saying, Look, we're going to take everything that is digital in nature and we're going to use everything that's digital in nature to help you, the business owner, get more customers. We're going to help you target uh, with as much accuracy as we possibly can who you want to reach. And we're going to use, you know, every tool at our disposal to help you connect with more customers. So... To, some people call it internet marketing. Some people call it online marketing. I kind of like digital marketing because it includes a broader spectrum just to me. But I'm happy if somebody calls it internet marketing or online marketing. It doesn't really matter that much to me. It's more about achieving specific results. And when, uh, David, did you first get involved in uh, digital marketing? Maybe you could uh, give us a little background on how you got into all this. Well, basically, um, I was a college student pursuing a degree, uh, I'm sorry, a degree in English. I was studying literature and English uh, in college, and while I was enrolled, you know, we would have exams and, and and tests that required a great deal of writing, as you could imagine. Um, So here I am, you know, a student, and I'm studying Shakespeare and Chaucer and Keats and analyzing sonnets and writing these big, long, um, you know, essay answers to questions and, and everything. So to relax, I started studying programming, you know, as a way to help me unwind. And the more I did it, the more I actually started to enjoy it. Now, at that time, that we're talking early to mid-1990s. At that point, the Internet was beginning. So I started building very basic uh, websites back then because we didn't have Google. Uh, We had Yahoo and Excite. And uh, we didn't have the type of websites online and the depth of what can be offered in terms of functionality that really wasn't available back then in the 90s. So I started working on basic websites back then while I was still a college student, and I started working with local business owners whom I would meet going to networking groups or through uh, different internships. And so, you know, I would have journalism scholarships and internships, and while I was there, I would also say, well, yeah, I can also help you get online. Uh, oh, can you make us number one on uh, in the search engines? Sure. Back then it was easy because we only had Yahoo and Excite. It was very easy to do uh, what we used to call black hat uh, SEO tricks, basically. You could do the programming in such a way that you could get them to number one in the search results very, very quickly. Um, now, of course, it's a little bit more complicated with Google. Um, but that's how I got started. And uh, once I finally got my degree, started working for different agencies, then I saw that there were a lot of larger companies that were more focused on generating profits 
and they were using their websites in very different ways. These companies did not see their websites as just static, one-and-done items, but as parts of a larger process, and they were very focused on revenue. So, for example, a nonprofit organization would tell me, you know, look, we really need to increase our, our donorship. We need to hit this mark. We've got to get, you know, this amount coming in, you know, at least, you know, on a quarterly basis. If we're not generating this much revenue, we go under. So for them, uh, getting number one in Google was a big deal. And one new lead per month could equal thousands of dollars every month in donations. Um, you know, a lawyer, one new lead per month could be anywhere from ten to thirty thousand dollars in fees. The same thing for a dentist or a doctor. Um, you know, one new lead per month could could be worth at least several thousand dollars, if not more. So, for them, having a highly interactive website with very targeted uh, search results could really make a big difference. So I started working with more and more companies like that, um, you know, and we're really seeing a difference that digital marketing could make and seeing what I was doing is more of a larger, broader picture, more of a service than just an item. So by today's standards, you would have, you know, most small business owners will look at a website and just say, hey, look, any old website is good enough. We don't really care. Um, if they were to get to number one in Google, would they know? If they were to get, you know, 20, 30 more phone calls per month, would it uh, amount to more business for them? Would they make substantially more money or not? Um, whereas the more medium to middle-sized business, one new lead per month can make a huge difference because we're talking, you know, thousands of dollars, could be tens of thousands. So I started working with more and more of them um, to make more of an impact. And so I, you know, worked for many different agencies. While I was working for agencies, I would take the low hanging fruit that they didn't want. You know, for an agency, they've got utilities, a lease to pay, employee benefits, HR department, and so on that they have to pay. So for them to work with a client with a low budget, they can't do that. So they can't really work with a client unless their budget is at least, you know, 10 grand to start because of the overhead that they have. So for a lot of the agencies that I worked for, a smaller client with a budget of 3,000 or 5,000, most agencies would turn that down. But for me, that was very good. So I could say, hey, that's, I can work with you in my spare time. I can definitely help you. I can show you ways to bring in more customers using digital technology, but I could also teach you other ways to use cloud technology, to put your bookkeeping online, to work more efficiently, to consolidate different processes, reduce overhead, and basically work much, much more efficiently. Um, so that very um, came to be my area of speciality. If that makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. So, David, I wanted to ask you, so when you're working with some of these co uh, companies, especially startup you know, companies, where do you think digital marketing should come in? I mean, do you think really the, the basis now, the foundation to, you know, promotion is digital marketing when you're starting up a business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, statistically, I can't give you the exact specific numbers off the top of my head. Uh, but I have a lot of statistics on my, my company website, dms.blue. Statistically, the majority of small business owners are either not online at all or they're online in a way that really does not directly benefit them, meaning they just have a Facebook page, which doesn't allow you to capitalize on Google search results, which is what we call SEO. So... The majority of small business owners who really need to increase their revenue quickly are using it. And 
that's what I call the digital marketing paradox. And there are times when it makes me feel really sad when people will call me and tell me the positions that they're in, uh, you know, what they're going through. And, you know, that's what they, they need to get the lead. They need to generate the revenue. They're in dire straits. But for whatever reason, they're just not doing it. It could be fear. It could be a sense of overwhelm. It could be, you know, uh, family members are, are doing everything themselves and, you know, it could be wonderful people. They, they're family members you love, but they're not professionals, so they don't have the experience. They're not doing the utmost that they could be doing. And I see that as a, a very common, a common thread. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, that's what most business owners really, before you even start the business, you want to get clear on what your identity is, what your niche market is, who you're appealing to, how you're going to differentiate yourself from other competitors in your market. And once you're clear on those things, then you can sit down with a professional such as myself and say, you know, here's what I know. Here's a realistic budget range for me. I want to get to number one in Google for these terms and this type of description for this market. And I know who some of my competitors are in this arena. I'm, you know, I've looked at what they're offering. Here's some of my input. And I love it when I talk to clients like that because it shows me they care and they have passion about growing their business. Okay, David, you know what? That sounds great. What we are going to do is we are going to take a quick break and we will be back for our next segment. My guest today calling us from beautiful North Fort Myers, Florida, Mr. D David M. Uh, Summerfleck, and who is a digital marketing specialist as we're talking about digital marketing and how to, uh, you know, grow your business through uh, digital marketing. And it's a whole new world, whole brave world. And we're so glad that David is kind of here to to explain it, break it down and let it, let us know how we could utilize it to its fullest. You are listening to the Mike Care Radio Show, Fantastic Florida, as always, probably broadcasting from Akoi, Florida, USA, planet Earth. And please stay with us for our next segment of this edition of our program today. Well, welcome back to our next segment of this edition of the Mike Care Radio Show. Uh, fantastic Florida, as always, probably broadcasting from uh, Coe, Florida, USA, planet Earth. My guest today is David uh, Summerfleck, who is a digital marketing specialist, specialist, if I could say it, talking about uh, digital marketing and uh, business growth through uh, digital marketing. And he helps a lot of different people and mainly where he he helps them is where he lives in North Fort Myers, Florida, and um, but he can he can go just about anywhere. But uh, he definitely is 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 here, you know. And if 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 you're starting a business and uh, you know you really want to get that digital marketing, he is uh, you know here, and uh, we're so glad that uh, David uh, Summerfleck uh, is here today. Great digital marketing specialist from north of fort myers florida uh pleasure honor you could join me uh today david uh, truly blessed and honored thanks so much okay uh david so i want to talk you know as we mentioned that you know you work with uh, bigger uh, companies smaller companies all size you know different uh, companies so i mean for you do you is there a similarity i mean obviously you know the the, the size and the scope of you know ma major companies i mentioned at the beginning of of this but i mean is there a similar similarities that you you could see and no matter what size of business it is there are similarities um, across the board in all businesses, um, you know, the number one issue that you see with small businesses, but then again, you also see them with medium businesses and even larger ones, is looking at cost as opposed to value. And I want to repeat that because it's a very, very important, vital point to make to your listeners looking at cost as opposed to value. You know, uh, 
when I was a kid, I remember uh, my dad was in the Navy and we, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money. And I remember my dad uh, bought me a bicycle when I was a kid. He bought me a cheap bicycle because that's all he could afford. And I loved it. I lived on that bicycle. Uh, you know, I went to the pharmacy, I'd go to the stores, I'd run errands for my mother. I loved being on that bicycle. And after about six months, it started breaking down. You know, you'd get a flat tire, the handlebars would come loose, the rim would get rusted over, and on and on and on. And basically, you know, after a couple of years, my father realized, hey, you know, we, we bought this bike, we spent this amount of money, and it keeps breaking. I keep having to buy new parts and repair it or take it into a shop to be repaired. And after a couple of years, he just said, you know what? It makes more sense to go ahead and spend more money to get the Schwinn model that would last you 20 or 30 years and come with a warranty, but I'm done with it. It's done. Um, so many times I've met business owners, whether they're small mom and pop uh, restaurants or salons or optical boutiques or you know a local lawyer or accountant. So many times I've met business owners like that but then I've also met larger businesses that are manufacturers or construction companies who will scrimp on budget as opposed to looking at the value of, can you really make my phone ring with more leads because I need to increase sales, I have a family to support, this is real to me. That's a very common thread and it's a matter of seeing digital marketing um, probably more as like an afterthought. Or, you know, I've heard some people say we see, they see it as a fad or as a trend or, you know, it just, we just don't know who it reaches or who it doesn't reach. And the reality is that it can reach whoever you want. It's just a question of empowering that medium to go to work for you um, as a 24-hour marketing division of your company. And you can set it up to be all automated and you sit back and you tweak it every month. You know, I created a site for a kitchen uh, and basement remodeler, like that uh, TV show Man Caves. Yeah. And some of these fixer-upper shows you see. And he was a very, very nice guy. So I, I, I felt for him. I felt for his situation. I could relate. So I said, look, I'm going to create a site for you. You're going to go to number one in Google very quickly because the demographics here, there's not a lot of competitors doing this. So I can guarantee you this. And I'm telling you ahead of time. So when your phone starts ringing and you start getting emails, are you going to call them back? Are you going to, you know, respond to these calls? Because I'm telling you ahead of time, you're going to get phone calls. Sure enough. Hey, I sure can, Dave. Oh, yeah, I can do this. Sure enough, uh, the site went live. About two weeks later, he started getting overwhelmed with phone calls and emails from people who wanted to work with him. There was an old lady, I saw her email, that she emailed him and said, you know, look, I need to uh, have my kitchen redone in my, my uh, basement. I want my grandkids to be able to live in the basement with me. I need that redone. I understand it's gonna cost at least 20,000 to redo the basement probably another 10 grand or so to do the kitchen. I get it, at least that's gonna be the minimum. He never called her back. He was too busy uh, working at Home Depot. And I said, look, my heart goes out to you, I get it. But you could have set aside, you know, 10, 15 minutes to call her. You know, I'd go knock on her door with that kind of uh, a program going on. So I do see, see common threads with small to medium to larger business owners. And it, one of the common threads is basically seeing digital marketing as maybe a fad or not taking it seriously, um, or maybe, you know, it's something we don't, we don't really need, um, or we may not need it now, maybe years from now. And statistics have borne it out that, you know, the internet, the internet is not going anywhere. If anything, it's moving much faster than anyone had ever anticipated. You know, Amazon and eBay are gobbling up retail companies uh, faster than, than, 
you know, the stock market can even keep track of. You know, if you read the news and you look at the, the financial news, you know, more and more retail outlets are going out of business because they just cannot compete with Amazon. They, they just don't know how to compete. Um, even Walmart went through a period where their sales were much lower than expected. Then they started gearing up their website and saying, let's make it so that people can place orders online for picking up in the store. Then they did it for the groceries. Only now, years later, are they finally starting to enable home delivery of, of just some items. Target just announced that they're starting to do the same thing now. So this is years after Amazon has already been around. So they're just now starting to wake up to the challenge that digital marketing is presenting to them. So that's one big common thread that I see um, across the board with all business owners. And then second to that is just fixating on price as opposed to cost. Or, or I'm saying, I'm sorry, fixating on cost over value. And that's really the biggest, most important one, that digital marketing can basically make your phone ring. You know, you can use digital marketing to have people knock on your door to come pick things up, to place orders online, to buy downloads, to order products, to pay for services, to book reservations, whatever that the mind can conceive your website could be number one in Google providing that service, and then you use social media to reinforce that impact and to uh, get the word out to more and more people around the world and where you live. So those are just a few common threads that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay, David. So when we're talking, you mentioned about social media. And so I'm wondering how important, I mean, is Facebook, Instagram, I mean, for restaurants, professional businesses, I mean, how important it is to have these accounts? Um, they're important if the focus is business growth. If, if there are some people who have a business who see it more as a hobby. You know, it's just something that I do for fun in my spare time. If I make money at it, great. If I don't, it's really no big deal. Um, or in some cases, you know, hey, I just want to have a blog for my church group or just to have fun to write about uh, things that interest me. If, if it gets a lot of readership, great. If it doesn't, I don't really care. Um, those, that's fine. That's what I would call more of a hobby. And that's not really something where I would come in or be a value. Um, so if, if the, the focus is for business and the focus for that business is on growth, creating it, accelerating it, then I would say social media is very important because it is a way of taking your content, whether that's a blog post or a podcast like yours, it could be your photography, your, your books, whatever it is that you offer or do. It could be a restaurant with special offers or coupons or a special of the day. Um, then social media marketing is very important for getting the word out, whether it's locally or nationally or both. Because even though I prefer to work with clients locally, I can tell you my website does get visits uh, from people all around the world because it's on the World Wide Web. And, you know, hey, if somebody in Canada wants to work with me, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and I've had, I have had people from Canada contact me, even though I'm in Florida. And I tell them, that's great. I can use digital media to talk with you. We could get on Skype and do a video conference. I can take payments online 24-7. I could use my calendar to, um, you know, schedule something at a mutually convenient uh, time to differentiate, you know, for the different time zones. I can figure out what the pay discrepancy would be, you know, online as well. So um, if growth is the focus, making more money is the focus, then I would say social media is very, very important. However, it's really important to understand that there's many different social media channels out there right now, many. And it's really important that if you're new to business or growing, you stick with three or four that you 
feel the most connection to and that are also the best fit for you. So, for example, everybody knows about Facebook. It's used by around 2 billion people per day, so that's 2 billion, which is pretty substantial. I mean, 2 billion people around the world every day log in, and most people who log into Facebook stay logged in all day long. So imagine people logged into Facebook all day long, and you can show your ads to them anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day, for very, very low, affordable prices. And yet most small business owners don't do it. And if you offer to, to do it, to help them with it, they still won't do it. That's uh, it, very disheartening at times, but um, it's very important. So Facebook will reach about 2 billion people per day. It's very broad, but that being said, you can use Facebook to zero in very specifically on particular age groups, uh, income levels, uh, professions, uh, city, state, zip code, even neighborhoods. You can make it very specific. And it's very, very, very affordable. I mean, for a budget of like $20, $30 a day, you can advertise to a very targeted group on Facebook. So it's great. Um, LinkedIn is more expensive but it typically targets people who are professional and work at very specific companies um, and are more likely to be a CEO or a senior level executive. Um, and then you have social media channels like uh, Pinterest for people who want their content in the form of images. And these could be people who are graphic designers, could be illustrators, painters, um, you know, sculptors, artists, um, you know, of any kind, could be designers. Um, so if what you do is very visual, then you could use Pinterest. And then there's Instagram, which is also very visual. Um, so again, if you were to have a salon or a restaurant or you do something that's very visual, then you really would want to be on Instagram because people are going to see those images. And Instagram, believe it or not, is still considered to be very new. So advertising on Instagram is still very affordable and can reach a lot of people very quickly. So, you know, yeah, I would say social media is very important if a business is really focused on growing and reaching more people and is ready for that. Okay, David, you know what? That sounds simply fantastic. What we are going to do is we are going to take a quick break, and we will be back for our very last segment of this edition of our program today. My guest today is David uh, Summerfleck, who is a digital marketing marketing specialist, today talking about digital marketing and, and how to use that for great business growth. And that's, that's basically what uh, we're talking about today is digital marketing through business growth, and that's basically why. What David does as a specialist and as a consultant is he comes in and he focuses on the fact, is this going to grow your you know, business? You know, sure, it's, it's cute to have all these other things, but what he tries to focus is on is different things, you know, digital marketing, you know, ordering online, you know, uh, picking up, uh, you know, online, you know, making reservations, you know, all sorts of easy, t- you know, things that that serve as marketing because this is all about convenience and if you have that convenient idea if people know that's the that's the beauty and like i said this this particular business uh, my care media group uh, you know is is open to, uh, I could speak for the boss and say that uh, he believes, the boss of Mike Cara Media Group uh, definitely believes that this is, you know, a great opportunity, uh, this digital uh, marketing, and I, I am going to, I am going to embrace it for one. And uh, so, again, my guest, uh, David uh, Summer uh, Fleck from North Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, you are listening to the Mike Cara Radio Show, Fantastic Florida, as always, probably broadcast from Coe, Florida, USA, Planet Earth. And please stay with us for a very last segment of this edition of our program today. Well, welcome back to our very last segment of this edition of the Mike Care Radio Show Fantastic Florida, as always, probably broadcasting from Coe, Florida, USA, Planet Earth. My guest today is... 
David Summer Fleck, who is a digital marketing specialist and today talking about digital marketing and business growth. And we're so blessed and honored to have David here to tell us all about that, who is from North Fort Myers, Florida. Thus, this this became a fantastic Florida. And just a, a quick uh, you know, recap of fantastic Florida. What we try to do is showcase people, things, businesses, and individuals such as David, who is in, uh, in Florida, making Florida fantastic. There was a time where we just included in What's Up America, and we were going to do that. But now with David being in uh, Florida, it's a pleasure honored now to change uh, to, to this particular show. So again, my guest, uh, great uh, digital media specialist, uh, David uh, Summer Fleck from North Fort Myers, Florida. So I want to thank David. I also want to thank each and every one of our radio listeners for uh, joining me today, sharing my love and passion for what I do, which is bringing you uh, David's love and passion for what he does. And you know, if you'd like to become a tweet peep, you can do it. It's so easy. It is, it is one, two, three. You can go to twitter.com slash M I K E K A R A 73. That's that's Mike Kara slash seven at twitter.com slash Mike Kara 73. And it's my name and birth year. And you're going to get a plethora of information. First, I'm going to say I've interviewed David M. Uh, Summer uh, Fleck. Then I'm going to say I'm working on a show with David uh, M. Summer Fleck. And then I'm going to say the show with David M. Summer Fleck is all done. And again, anytime we put anything that we interview anyone on the uh, on Twitter, that it's actually done and just a matter of, like today of, of of finishing up after I drone on here and uh, you know putting it on. So any anytime anything is said, uh, you know that is great. Again, we want to welcome all of our uh, friends from uh, Germany. Apparently, twenty two percent of listeners from this 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 whole show is from Germany. So welcome. We'll have to get to your country, and we appreciate that. And three percent uh, also of of this show is Australian, and about. 69% is in America. So welcome everyone on uh, iTunes and Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and Spotify and TuneIn and uh, 60 different platforms. So uh, we're, we're really excited, uh, you know, making a little chicken scratch off this, but, uh, and, and I appreciate everyone listening to this show. And, uh, you know, we hope, uh, we hope that uh, this can, can blossom, but uh, we're here to stay for now, at least. Uh, we, we appreciate uh, our listeners very much. And we also appreciate uh, David uh, Summerfleck and David Pleasure Honor. You could join me today. Thanks so much. We're truly blessed. And David, you know, we were talk, talking about, uh, you know, bi business growth and, you know, digital marketing. And we're talking, I think one of the, the keys here is about getting new customers is convenience. And we mentioned that about, you know, ordering online, making reservations online. But that is a form of marketing because, you know, people tend to do what is the most convenient then, huh? Yes. And... And I think that's where you see, again, the, the digital marketing paradox, where the small business owners who need it the most, statistically, are not using digital marketing. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, at least 70% of small businesses will go bankrupt within the first several years. And I see that as an epidemic that's spreading. And you see this in retail, and seven, more than at least 70% of small business owners going under within the first several years is an epidemic. And, um, you know, I was a business mentor for SCORE, which is a division of the United States Small Business Administration. A lot of people don't know that they exist. And basically around 50 to 55 years ago, the United States government saw that small business owners were the core of U.S. business. They were the lifeblood of, you know, the, the the United States. But the majority would go under very quickly. So they created the U.S. Small Business Administration to try to help small businesses by providing information resources, basically, and offer loans. So 
So the Small Business Administration offers loans to struggling small business owners, and part of what they do is SCORE, which was an organization for retired executives. And I volunteered for them for almost 10 years. And um, the reason I left SCORE after a while was because it was just overwhelming. I was getting so many phone calls and emails uh, on a daily basis that it was literally like a full-time job. And it started to even be more of a full-time job because people were calling when my phone was off and they were calling and emailing me all the time. And a lot of the situations were very complicated. A lot of them involved family members and other businesses and me doing research for them and getting back to them. And there'd be three or four conversations and, you know, multiple uh, consultations because the problems would be ongoing. Um, and after doing that for almost 10 years, I realized this is just taking up way too much time and is actually quite stressful. Uh, and some of the people, you know, aren't there when you call them, they don't call you back, they don't do what you recommend and so on. But the, the need is profound, um, you know, but can you repeat what your original uh, question was? Um, let's see what, what, uh, what was it, uh, about, uh, business, uh, growth, uh, how, oh, oh yeah. How the convenience of, uh, yeah, uh yeah. of, of thank all you. this stuff. Yeah. Thank you. I wanted to say that convenience is a factor that goes both ways. One of the reasons, reasons why I see the digital marketing paradox where the people who need digital marketing the most typically don't use it. So it's a matter of convenience. Because digital marketing has only been around for about 30 years, to many people it's still seen as new or an unknown equation. How do you budget? How does it work? Can't anybody do it? You know, it should be free because I see commercials where they show monkeys building websites and everything, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so there's a disconnect on that end where it's not really convenient for them because it's still new and it's very complicated. It has a lot of depth, a lot of moving parts. And you see that in small new businesses as well as larger businesses, like some of the older, more established law firms don't even have websites or they have ones that don't really work very well. Um, because they really don't need it. They're older law firms. Uh, the people there are much older. They don't really see the need for digital marketing because it's not how they did things in the previous generation. Um, so it's not convenient for them. But on the flip side of that, you know, I recently went to a restaurant and I, my wife wanted to look them up online. I said, well, they don't have a website. Maybe you should look them up. So I said, okay, well, you know, I listened to my wife, like a good husband. I looked them up and saw they didn't have a website. And I talked to the owner, and the owner basically said, look, we're not interested. We're struggling. We're struggling just to pay the, the rent and the utilities and pay our employees. And half the year it's really busy here. The other half of the year it's dead. Nobody comes in at all. So we're struggling. And my argument to that would be, Yes, and you're going to keep on struggling because when the season is slow, you need to pick up the pace. So you need to use the busy season to promote even more. You need to have events there year-round, have networking groups, uh, classes. You know, there's no restaurant in the world, no restaurant, no coffee shop, no tea house that should not be having you know, cooking demonstrations or classes there during their slow uh, periods or renting out the space as, you know, a, k a kitchen, you know, or for conferences or meetings or as a co-working place. Uh, they could all be doing much, much more than they're doing if they're open to it. And you could use the company website to promote that, to book a reservation, to take payments, to place an order and pick it up in the store or to have it delivered to you. So that, and people expect that level of convenience now. And if you don't have it, they're not going to call you up and tell you. They're just going to go to somebody else. You know, 
I can't tell you how many times I've been in a store locally where I would go to a store, and usually it's a hardware store, where I'm looking for a part or a component or something, and I can't find anybody to help me. And if I can, they don't have it. And I've actually been in stores where the people have told me, go to Amazon Prime, we don't have it, nobody knows anything, it's this big corporate giant, they don't respond to you know, requests, just go on Amazon and order it, you know? And, and if you want it cheaper and you don't care how long it comes, it takes to get to you, then use eBay. So I said, okay, fine. I mean, they're shooting their own company in the foot and they don't care, you know, because they work there. They're only getting paid as an hourly employee. Um, but the convenience factor, yes, it goes both ways in that it's, it's not convenient to the consumer unless you really get serious about building your business and making it a top priority. And then it's as convenient as you empower it to be and let it be for you. For the consumer, they expect that level of convenience. If I order a pizza, I shouldn't have to get in my car and drive to the pizza place to pick it up and bring it home. I should be able to place an order online if I want to and have them deliver it to me, right? That's what we're used we're used to. If I can't find a part at Home Depot, I should be able to get on Amazon and order it and have it delivered to my door in good condition. And if it's broken when I get it, I send it right back and get a refund. It's no hassle. So consumers now do expect that convenience. Um, you know, imagine being able to get online and make an appointment with your doctor. What difference that would make for you, you know? Imagine being able to pay all of your bills online from one account. Who wouldn't love to be able to do that? Right. You know, imagine being able to get on to your local mechanic's website and be able to take a video with your phone of the problem with your car and email the video to the mechanic. And the mechanic writes you back and says, I know exactly what the problem is. Book an appointment using my website pay using my website in advance and bring your car in and we got this done. Who wouldn't love to be able to do that? And it's taking place all around the world. You know, there are doctors now who work at overstaffed medical facilities around the world now. Um, they're understaffed medical facilities. And you might have seen this in the news where doctors are using video conferencing where you see the doctor's face and there's a camera on top of this mounted thing with wheels on it and it goes around like a little automated robot and it goes into the patient's rooms and the patient can see the doctor on the video. The doctor can see them with the video and zoom in and say, okay, well, here's what I see based on what you're describing. This is what I think it is. Tell the doctor there in your office, it's your facility, what I think is going on. I'll be there as soon as I can. So you see that happening more and more and more at businesses around the world. You know, I was reading recently that Walmart in some locations is beginning to automate uh, in the same way where they're sending these little robots on wheels around the store to answer, you know, customer questions. And they're trying to find ways to use these little automated robots to also stock the shelves, to just take what's needed from the warehouse you know, off the pallet, use a little lever to pick it up and put it up on the shelf. And once they do that, you know, you're talking a lot of people are going to be out of work. So, yeah, things are changing very quickly. And uh, people want convenience and they expect it. Oh, great. And now I, I wanted to ask you, uh, David, about, you know, these webinars as, as a source. We're talking about business growth here. What's your opinion on, you know, you get it, we you get a bunch of us guys on cell phones and then we all listen to so, somebody and they, they, they tell us about their product. I mean, do you think that's good for business growth? Um, I don't think it could hurt, but, well, let me rephrase that. I think it can hurt if it's not done properly, if it's not done correctly. Um, if it's done in a way that you can understand what's being said clearly, I'm talking about from a technical perspective. If the sound is broken up and you can't understand the person or what they're saying and 
it's just not a very good quality, then it's not a good idea. If you're not organized and you're not rehearsed in what you're going to say, how you're going to present things, then I don't think you should do it. I think it can be very helpful if you use it and the person uh, giving the presentation is doing it in a very orderly way. Um, I personally don't do it because I like the more hands-on face-to-face or conversational approach. I prefer to just talk to people on the phone uh, two or three times to find out if they're serious and if there's a need, frankly. Um, And if they're serious and committed to change and, you know, growth is a top priority, then I prefer to meet locally. If we can't meet locally, then I'll do Skype or video conference. We can see each other face-to-face and talk. Um, The phone conferencing, I think, can work if it's done correctly. Um, You know, and it's ultimately all about the message and the substance, not the hype. Um, And you see that a lot with politics where, you know, a lot of politicians struggle with being authentic and coming across as real to the voters. And that's what voters really want. They want someone who's real. You know, if you're a nerd, be a bookworm nerd. You know, if you're not like that, then be who you really are. Um, And I think that with these webinars, it's very, very important for the person conducting it to be as authentic and as organized as they possibly can be and make sure it's the best thing that you can do. You know, technically, there's a lot of challenges to making sure you have the right equipment and you know what you're doing. And if you don't um, or you don't have time to do all of that or not or just the interest, you can certainly hire someone to help you do it. Um, I'm just beginning to do more videos for my YouTube channel where I just basically sit and look at the camera and talk in a conversational manner. And I'm slowly gearing up to do a podcast like yours and trying to do um, you know, like a small chat show where I have people come into my office and we just have a conversation about business and how to help small business owners more. Um, I'd love to do that with uh, local Florida business owners, actually. Um, but I think it can, it can be helpful for the consumer if it's done in a, in, in a quality way. And for the person putting on the presentation, I think it could be very helpful if they feel that they have all their ducks in a row. I, I prefer video myself. I think it's more personal and more direct. People like to see who they're talking to. You know, for me, people make fun of me with the blue glasses and wearing blue everywhere I go. And they just say, well, there's the tall, skinny, ball-headed guy who wears blue and has blue glasses everywhere. So they like to see me in person, and I like to make that connection anyway. So that's fine, you know. Um, But, yeah, I think that they they can be very, very good. Okay, um David, before we appreciate your time. Before we go here, I think we, we kind of covered it, but we want to talk about uh, this, uh, you know, DMS Blue, and you give it a lot of uh, tips here and, you know, how people could get a hold of you. you we want to let everyone know that you're in North Fort Myers, but you, ca- you can travel, huh? I couldn't or I could. You could travel. <laughs> or do you want to travel? Absolutely. I don't know. Absolutely. Let me answer your, your question. Uh, my business website is dms.blue. So it's D like David, M like Martin, S like Summerflack, or what, you know, Sam or whatever. So it's dms.blue, like the color blue. Uh, I'm a digital marketing specialist, and those also happens to be my initials. So I lucked out one day and found that domain name and just said, that's it, that's me. You know, it's, it's who I am, it's what I do, it's perfect. Um, so dms.blue is where you can go. It can be www, or you can just type the HTTPS in there. Or Honestly, most people don't realize that you don't need to type any of those things in. You can just go to a browser um, or a address bar and just type in dms.blue and it'll come up right away. Um, I live in North Fort Myers, Florida, which is near uh, Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Naples. Um, I love going to Sarasota uh, to visit businesses there as well. So anywhere anywhere within that radius, I don't mind driving to. 
but typically I like to talk to people once or twice over the phone uh, just to make sure that we're a good fit for each other, to make sure that they own a business and that they're really interested in making more money and growing that business as opposed to just asking general questions. Um, I don't mind questions. If people do have questions, they can certainly um, email me at dms.blue. I'm always happy to get back to people with questions that are, you know, focused on business. Um, they can also call me at 424-DAVID-01. And, um, you know, I always get to get back to people within a day or two. Um, and let me see what else. I also do have a lot of resources on my uh, business website and a lot of statistics to try to provide as much information as possible uh, to people who are interested in learning more. And I'm always updating the site and building it up and adding more and more and fine tuning things and um, getting ready to add a resources uh, page as well to offer links to different services for people so they can learn you know, how to scan a website and make sure that it's safe for them to use. Um, you know, things like that. So I'm always adding more and more to it and always interested in helping business owners. Okay, uh, David, and before we go, since this uh, is uh, fantastic, Florida here, if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, you know, we mentioned North Fort Myers, but a little bit about where you're uh, living, you know, a little, little bit about uh, your part of Flo Florida. Are you enjoying it? Uh, oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, it's this is just to me, and some people might feel differently. To me, North Fort Myers is kind of a quiet area, um, which I like. Um, it seems like, you know, again, we've only been here for about two years now, so we don't know the area as well as a lot of other people. And again, if you're a business owner in North Fort Myers, uh, you know, feel free to get in touch and go to dms.blue and send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Um, so I, I don't know that much about the area, um, but you know what we've seen so far, we, we enjoy very much. Uh, it, it seems to me to be a relatively quiet area with several parks nearby. And I've always been a nature nut. And I grew up in Virginia, so I always enjoy being in nature. So I love getting out in the woods and and you know just spending time hiking and just getting out there and seeing you know what nature has to show you for the day. Um, I know nearby is Cape Coral, and it's maybe 20 minutes from here, Fort Myers, and uh, Naples. Uh, what else is near Estero before you get to Naples? I, I, and, and I should say, you know, I, I don't know that much about what some of the different areas offer because I've only been here for two, two years, and, you know, a lot of that time has been, you know, spent doing other things and, uh, you know, visiting different places so far. Okay, uh, David, really appreciate your time. Any final thoughts or anything else you'd like to mention here? Um, well, I'd like to thank you for letting me be on your podcast and, um, you know, invite the listeners out there to, uh, you know, keep in touch or, or uh, feel free to get in touch with me if they have any follow-up questions about uh, digital marketing, SEO, uh, even building their businesses and how to promote it. Um, anything business related. I always love helping business owners and I love getting in there and just seeing the nuts and bolts of a business and, you know, making a positive impact on their lives. Okay. My guest has been uh, David uh, Summerfleck and you've been listening to the Bike Care Radio Show.